Welcome to the Best Wines Online Tasting Room. I'm Kyle Meyer, and um, uh, you're coming up on 30 years. 30 years. This gig. What are, what are the big plans? Well, we just built our new winery, so those plans are done. Yeah. And now my plans are to try to sell the wine and pay for the wine. <laughs> oh, I love realists. <laughs> uh, Dick Doré, uh, co-founder of Fox and Vineyards and Winery. Yes. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to get to uh, visit uh, in the old days. Wait, is it still the old days? You still got the shack, right? Still or, got the shack. We can't close the shack. the shack. You can't close the shack. So, I don't know, you know, in the Central Coast, it is one of the places to stop uh, when you're visiting and on the wine route or the wine route, the wine trail, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, back in, uh, well, for me, my first stop there was probably 1992, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, you cruise up, right? And then, boom, on the right-hand side of the road, as you're going up Fox and Canyon Road, there's the shack. Yeah. And you're like, wow, this doesn't, you know, this isn't like one of those tasty rooms. No, this is the old blacksmith shop on the ranch. That's <laughs> it. And you cruise in and, and boom, like, yeah, and it's like an hour later you leave and it's like one of the greatest experiences you had in the Central Coast. It's true. It's true. It, uh, it was even famous before the movie Sideways, but once yes. the movie Sideways came out, it, it got very famous. <laughs> but it did sit with the skins for about two weeks in an open-top tank. Mm, okay, so that would explain all the tannins, no? Well, it is a young wine, so as the uh, wine ages, the tannins will dissipate. Right, of course. Excuse me for just a minute. Good stuff. <laughs> Whoa. Fell up there, Bob. And so you were taking, like, reservations for people to come and taste your gear? Well, it went from 200 to 1,000 a week after Sideways. No kidding. No kidding. Okay, that I did not know. <laughs> that? Serious? Oh, you know, and it was a whole different clientele. It wasn't the 40 and 50 and 60s. It was the 20 and 30s with tattoos and piercings coming from L.A. and limos. Yeah. You know, and, and it's funny you mention that because the whole sideways thing, because, okay, first of all, we can't, because uh, we're going to digress just for two seconds, before, but it's a great digression into this. Um, you can't discount what happened with that film. No. It, it, it's, it was really one of these landmark moments in the history of wine in California, mm -hmm. I think. And it's, it's silly that a movie would have that impact, but uh, the truth hurts. And the truth is reality. The truth is sales. The truth is sales. <laughs> because as we were talking earlier, it's the wine business. That's it. And uh, we're here to buy and sell wine. Now, what it did do is put Pinot Noir on the map, and which for the Central Coast and for many areas of the Central Coast is not a bad thing, right? Oh, I mean, it not only put Pinot Noir on the map, but it put Santa Barbara County on the map. Yeah, People knew from L.A. that we had an area closer than Napa to go to. Right. <laughs> And have an actual wine experience. <laughs> and, and, and good wine. And good wine. <laughs> so let's talk about a couple different Pinot Noir uh, regions sure. that, that you guys are rolling with today. Because, um, uh, I, mean, I mean, basically Fox has been known as a, as a, you guys work with a lot of different grape varieties well. Yes. And that's always kind of been your trademark, mm -hmm. is you do multiple things well. Mm -hmm. I mean, before it was like, you know, early on maybe it was like Chardonnay and some yeah. Pinot Noir. But you guys are like jacks of all trades and masters of all. Well, thank you. Thank you. No, 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 this is the truth. So, but in the end, we, we, we do only have 12 minutes. All right. So, so, we have... uh, so we're going to talk Pinot Noir. Sure. So um, let, let's start with the Santa Maria Valley. Um, let, and let's talk about, actually, let's jump straight into it. I want to talk about the differences with, that you know of between Santa Maria Valley and Santa Rita Hills as Appalachians. Because we see these names on labels, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really hard to differentiate because it's all kind of central coast. Yes. But in the end, there is a difference, and that's why you do what you do. Yes. And the differences are pretty much significant. I mean, the Santa Maria Valley is known for red summer fruit and spice. I mean, mm -hmm. you can always pick up the cinnamon cloves, cardamom, mm -hmm. along with these great cherries and raspberry flavors. Whereas Santa Rita Hills tend to be a little darker fruit, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the Santa Rosa corridor, Santa Rosa Road corridor, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little heavier soil. But usually it's more blueberry, blackberry, a little, a little bigger wines than normally the Santa Maria Valley. It, yeah. Is one area like cooler than Because we hear about how cool Santa Rita Hills is, but mm -hmm. we hear about these big wines coming from Santa Rita Hills. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Santa Rita Hills, because it's a newer appellation, has gotten a lot more hype. And mm -hmm. the old, they refer to the Santa Maria Valley as the old. But see, the Santa Maria Valley has a lot of new plantings in it. I mean, mm -hmm. everything is, has new plantings. The right. whole Santa Barbara County. And the new plantings in Santa Barbara County and the Santa Maria Valley 
are these newer clones, the mm -hmm. new Davis distinguished clones. It's not all the old Swan and right. Martin Martini clones. We've got the new clones there. So right. I think they're both as cool. In fact, I think the Santa Maria Valley, at least our block eight in Santa Maria Valley, which is, you can see the Pacific Ocean 20 miles away from the top of it. Mm -hmm. It's west facing, it gets very cool. So as far as temperature, I think that is probably a little, I mean, these two wines, one comes from a little cooler growing area in the mm -hmm. Santa Rita Hills, the other comes from a little area that you would consider warmer, but you know, on any given day, we're not talking much. Right, right. So between the two, um, cause, oh, well, first of all, the Santa Rita Valley is like showing great today. Thank you. <laughs> this one's yeah, on it's, fire. Well, it's, it's just so supple and easy. It's Pomard Clone. Pomard Clone is always the most velvety, the most open to to drink. Mm -hmm. And I drink a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why <laughs> the wine kicks tail. So uh, so this is a blend of a couple different vineyards in Santa Maria Valley? It's primarily from our Block 8 Biennacito. It mm -hmm. has two halves. It was planted for us back in 95 at Biennacito. Half is Pomard clone, the other half is three Dijon clones and mm -hmm. the Vladisil clone. So clonally, it's it's pretty diverse, but mm -hmm. it, it, it it's really amazing when you put them all together. And, and the Santa Maria Valley, the Pomard clone half of it goes into this along with a little bit of uh, river bench that we are starting to develop some relationships with, which is another exciting vineyard that was planted by Behringer years and years mm -hmm. ago. So. Dude, creamy and seamless. Yes. That one's, is it like a 2012 thing or is it like a Fox and thing? It's like both. Yeah. That's <laughs> <One's> good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so let's move to Santa Rita Hills because we have two different Santa Rita Hills bottlings on mm -hmm. the table, right? And, uh, and we, we were talking a little bit about them earlier, but um, just the difference between... And it's a lot of young vine material, but we're already seeing these marked differences between exactly. these vineyards. Right. So uh, let's talk a little bit, little bit about the difference between John Sebastian and Lon Cantata as far as okay. vineyard sites. Well, Lon Cantata is a little older, planted in the year 2000 by Richard Sanford. Mm -hmm. uh, really well planted. It's right across uh, the river. It's on the Santa Rosa Road corridor, which is the southern road in the Santa Rita Hills. Mm -hmm. It's at the west end, so it tends to be the coolest or one of the coolest vineyards in all of Santa Barbara County, being closer to the ocean, mm -hmm. closer to Lompoc. Whereas this vineyard, or rather the John Sebastiano vineyard, is on the eastern end on the northern corridor, the 246 corridor. So as a result, it can be a little warmer, but it's very steep, it's very high, it still gets the winds from the ocean, and it still qualifies for the Santa Rita Appalachian, which mm -hmm. is important. You know, we were talking earlier, you know, Sebastiano, actually, it's got a little cooler vibe to it. Yes. Is that because of that elevation, or is it because of the, the clones there? Or? I think it's because of the clones. We have the 2A clone in here, which is the Vladisville clone, which tends mm -hmm. to be the thicker-skinned Pinot Noir. It always ripens about two weeks later than the other varietals, which is great for us because mm -hmm. we make a lot of Pinot, and we can delay some input of wine or grapes. And uh, the 2A clone tends to be more tannic, a little more thick-skinned, and it gives it a little more grip, a little more muscular. So what you learned so far, I mean, some because some of these, the clone thing's kind of important, right? But you don't really know until after 10, 12 years when the sticks are in the ground. Oh, yeah. And, like, you know, do you see some changes happening here coming oh God, out of yes. line as, as, I mean, as we learn stuff? Because there's, I mean, let, let's be frank, there's a lot of 667, oh, yeah. in the ground. Yeah. I mean, is that... I don't know. Like, well, it is like 2A plant, and that kind of stuff. Is you plant 667 in Santa Rita Hills and 667 in the Santa Maria Valley, it's going to mutate to site within 15 years and it's going to be two different animals. Mm. No, no varietal mutates to site like Pinot Noir and adapts with flavors that are unique. Right. So the key is we have to kind of hang out and wait. You got to wait. Is what well, you're saying. Well, luckily, this one is where it should be, and so is this. This one's only seven years old, but it definitely is uh, showing exceedingly well. So, big 30th anniversary party? I mean, are there going to be like dancing girls and stuff? Or I'm still trying to figure that out, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we'll probably have dancing girls. <laughs> I 
I don't know if we can give a party like Jim Clendenin or some of the other guys, but we're going to try. We're going to try to have us. <laughs> All right, kids. Uh, if you don't know Foxen, you don't know Dick. And you don't know Bill. Great. Dick, thanks for coming by. Thank you very this much. This was awesome. We really appreciate the time. Well, I appreciate it being here. Thanks. All right. Killer. Cheers.